Welcome back. So today we are going to talk about the Blonde Z300, otherwise known as Opportunity and Drums Part 2. So for those of you too young to remember the original Blonde BL03, and this one goes back a few years, this is actually what it looks like, and this is why you always see Apathy and Never Give Up and Music and Drums. This is where it came from. This is why people who've been around the scene a long time sort of refer to those things because at the time it was an amazing set with some you know amazingly bad translation on the words so there you go that's what the original looked like this is what the new one looks like and this of course is the hawaii bad boy wgz blonde collaboration called the z300 and now it actually kind of writes it out into better spelling so belief let music burn Apathy stay the same way. This is Apathy Part 2 and Never Give Up. So that is that. Also a nice new graphic. This whole dragon um, is actually pretty nice from their Z series. Up close, this is what it looks like. Again, you get that, that dragon design in gold. And it's kind of not going to so much show up in uh, on video. But it actually looks really great in person. And the gold shells are actually very nice. And there you go. So WGZ Blonde, this is the left one, Z300. This, of course, is the canvas bag, which is also part of the original. Uh, there was actually a canvas bag in there, and that's where that came from as well. So it was actually a welcome sight to see the canvas bag make a return. Cable is a bit special, and I thought originally this one was the file cable, but it is not. It's actually a very, very nice cable, and I would swear that I have a cable of the same material, the same exact look to this. I just couldn't really find it easily, but yeah, this is actually kind of a throwback, a throwback looking cable, a very nice looking, you know, probably OCC copper, um, nice material, sort of um, very much unexpected for the price point of $30. This is, you know, what a almost a $20 cable looked like when the BL03 came out. You had to pay it a pretty good amount of money just to have a cable that looked like that. So very nice um, addition to the package uh, in addition to the canvas bag and everything else. So let's start right here and um, I think the first thing that you have to notice about the Z300 it's got a very nice base shelf. This is not your analytic, uh, technical, neutral, you know, it's not one of those sets. This is very much a very fun. It sort of resembles Harmonish the way this kind of works out. Um, this rise is actually pretty relaxed, and you get a great extension over here. But yeah, I think you do have to take it, take notice of this and say, yeah, this is probably one that is going to be base fun, and that's exactly what it is. And and I don't think it's you know all that far from the intention of the original. The original was also a basey fun set. This one tends to lift this up a little bit more, whereas the other one was even, the original O3 was a little more relaxed. So this one has, I would call it just a little more V-shape on top of the original tuning. But again, both of them had a, a pretty big amount of mid-bass. We'll probably talk about that graph in uh, a little bit. So let's start with uh, number one. Am I tossing my BL03? No, I think these are actually two different sets, and I like them two different music styles. I like them for different reasons, and I liked BL03 for that natural, chill, relaxed, thick. You know, it just had more of a legato uh, vibe to it, if you heard that set. Just kind of a relaxed, bassy, chill set, and I think it was very, very good at that, and I think it appealed to lots and lots of genres and lots and lots of people for that one reason. What I like about the Z300 is sort of the opposite of it. I love it when it's hard-hitting and a little fast, a little speedy, a little more detailed. So, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily get rid of my BL03, but I do think this one fills another niche at the price point, and it does something a little different than other sets, and we'll kind of talk about that now. And very much my first thought out of the box um, on the Z300 it hits you with speed and is very revealing mids and the imaging and the attention to vocals um, not being lost in the bass. There, there's very much a thoughtful tuning on this one, which is different than the O3. And that's why I said I wasn't really getting rid of the O3. This one just hit me in a different place with different music genres. And speed was, was one of those things that kind of hit me right away, that the driver is tuned very differently than the original O3. 
for the uh, people who are in a hurry and don't want to watch the whole video, this is a $30 banger that kills pop, rock, rap, EDM, and pretty much anything in your Party Anthems playlist. Very much a play a pop music killing set. Because of the bass shelf, it hits almost all popular genres very, very well. There's no definitely no lack of bass. But it also has a very balanced mid and treble to actually balance that out. And it sounds very balanced and absolutely kills those genres. And you'll also recognize most of those genres of what Hawaii Bad Boy listens to as well. So that shouldn't really be a shock at all to you. What does it sound like? I do think it sounds like HPB listened to all the $30 sets, which uh, shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who watches his reviews. He tweaked the familiar signature towards his library and backed it with a great driver. You know, I, I think he delivered a $30 set, tweaked for his library, great driver, great accessories, cable. I mean, it's just kind of a very great value set that happens to be very, very good at these genres. And uh, yeah, I do think it's kind of a riff on this fun Harmon, but he really nailed the heavier thumping bass with the upper mid-range balance, and not too many sets do that. And that's why I said this one's a little bit different than the original, specifically for that reason. This heavy thumper kind of a hard slamming set at $30 is actually a little bit hard to find and it's kind of a rarity. So I will say he really nailed that balance and just in my opinion, I do like it a lot better than QKZ, um, the original QKZ HBB set. I think that one was just a little bit heavier and a little bit darker, especially in the treble. And I think this one actually gets the balance better for me anyway in the music that I listen to. Is it dark? Nope. Does it need more volume? I do. I do. I think this one needs just a little bit more volume to put everything a little bit more forward. I'm not sure it's a low volume set at all. Pair it with a warm source or narrow tips? Nope, I wouldn't do that either just because it has a pretty big bass shelf. And I do think it's probably a little bit too mid bassy for citizens of low volume land. You know, I think this is one of these hard topics where I think some people who listen to it at really low volume are probably going to find it a little bit too dark and a little bit too bassy you got to turn it up one or two notches and then everything kind of falls in place. But yeah, I think kind of right off the bat, I think I wouldn't, if I was a low volume listener looking for something with a brighter signature that stood out a low volume, I would probably not say it's this one. So in the bass, so right away, um, probably a day, the, you know, an hour or two into the set, I was actually listening to a playlist that was like, you know, here are the top 100 tunes to uh, look to judge your your headphones or something weird like that outcast bombs over baghdad absolutely made me stop and pay attention and like i said it really hits you with the speed and the clarity of vocals very much different than the o3 the way this one hits you and the way it actually falls into the speed of that track the bass is thumpy and tight and bouncy like, I would say the O3 wasn't really bouncy at all, and this one very much is bouncy and very much like this track, and the vocals are clear. It more reminds me of Melee, and if you remember what he said about Melee, Melee was almost his take on the O3 as well, just with a differently tuned driver. So again, that's that's pretty much what I would call the Z300. It's more reminiscent of Melee or even KZ's ZSTX. That was another hard-banging set that was fun and energetic, has the same vibe that that Z300 gives me, just not as hard, but but in that thumpy style, which again I said it's it's a bit you know rare to find at this price point. The level and speed are very very complementary to most popular genres, like I talked about. You get a nice bass boost; it's still warm, definitely not too thick, definitely not too persistent. It doesn't hang around too long and cloud the soundstage. Certainly not lacking, like I said, it's a great bass shelf. If you're into some of the uh, kind of finer things in life, like classical music or even jazz, I do think the, the mid-bass will creep up a little bit on Vivaldi. But again, I think this is just a set where it's better to hit 10 genres and nitpick a few, right? I think it hits all the popular genres in a very, very good way with that bass shelf. So if it, if it oversteps a little bit on a few, you know, I think that's a small price to pay for having a slamming set like this one does. So the Miz, and again, I think this was the most surprising part for me and, and what I first heard on, on the Outcast track. The upper mids are a bit forward in a non shouty or peaky way. They're just sort of elevated and forward, and they keep everything really nice and clear. 
And I, I do think it's probably one of the best executions of the style, as most sets tend to do to raise that pennant over 10, B, 10 dB. And I actually saw one this morning, right? So here is exactly what you would have expected to have happened. So blonde, uh, HBBZ 300 in the blue. So like I said, the pin again range is only probably 6 or 7 dB. It's actually very relaxed. And this whole little bit sounds a bit elevated, but not peaky or shouty. And then you look at what Dima, or, uh, Dunu's Kima Classic is about to do, and there it is. That's your classic. We're going to do a pretty big bass shelf, and then we're going to raise the pinna area by you know 5 dB, just because we raised this by 5 dB. Classic move. You know, you try to match the boost here with the boost here, and you end up with something that's a little bit too peaky, a little bit too shouty. That 5K is going to be super annoying. And then for fun, you know, they put like this 13 or 15K peak out there just to make sure you hear the air over this, over this. And uh, so, you know, some people will enjoy that. But again, I think in this style, I think he did a very, very good execution by keeping that pin low. But keeping the vocals clear. So I think the, the result is very clear, detailed, revealing mids that rise on the stage and keep the focus of the track instead of the bass. And it's hard to see it from the graph, and I know people are going to look at it and say there's just no way, but that's what it sounds like. And I, there's one nitpick, though. I think the vocals are a little bit too close in. They sound open and revealing, but they a little lose depth in the stage, and, and I think that was a fair trade-off of what really happened. You get clear vocals, they're just a little bit too close to you, and you lose some of the depth that you got on O3. But just looking at the graph, I think you're going to assume that there's recessed vocals, and it's, and it's almost the opposite. They're actually quite forward. But it's really the interplay of the mids over that big bass thump, that big slam. It's really my favorite part of Z of Z300. And I do like a big bass that still has some air to it. There's still some, you know, there's still some space around all the notes. So you don't have this huge persistent bass that's clouding the sound stage and the presentation. There's lots of air around the notes. Still sounds sharp, but on a track like this, so the Prodigy Minefields, huge bass, lots of electronic instruments up top. So you get that kind of V-shaped sound. Like I said, this one sounds just a bit more V-shaped than 03 comes really through on, on my fields. But better yet, when you listen to the Bauer remix of the same track, that actually speeds it up. And so it plays it just a little bit faster. And it actually, you know, it just clicks in with the speed of this driver and the tuning, and it gets a little bit more bouncy. And then you sort of realize that, yeah, this whole thing is just really different. And it sounds a little better when you get, when you try, tend to match the speed with the driver that is moving. You know, everything kind of clicks and it sounds pretty amazing. And, it, and you just sort of notice, I sort of knew what was happening on the Outcast song just by how fast that track is. You're like, oh, there's something really different going on here. And the driver is really keeping up with it. Sounds great. And then you hear these two versions of the same song and why the faster one sounds better. It's just, it's a very bouncy, tight, kind of slamming set. And it sounds great on, the, on actually both of those tracks. Treble, like I said, it kind of follows the trend of a few well-extended one-dynamic driver sets. There's nothing crazy going on here. It's just a really nice relaxed bit here, and then totally arc over into well-extended range. You know, I think lots of, uh, not lots of it, but quite a few recent sets do the same thing. That pin again at 6 to 7 dB between 2 and, and 5K, just perfect for me. I think it actually works out really well here. This is definitely more of that natural arc over extension and airiness than lots of V-shaped treble boosted guitars and trebles, which you're probably used to. You know, as soon as you boost that that 5K area, guitars and um, snares and even cymbals tend to take on this over energetic sound. And this one, you know, again, not too surprising if you watch lots of Hawaii Bad Boys reviews. He actually talks about that one area a lot and how he doesn't like over energized symbols so yeah not too shocking that he kept that uh, guitars and symbols uh, very natural no crazy 515k bump which is another thing that he has uh, talked about quite a bit in his reviews it's there there's lots of air there and you just hear it with the lower pinna you don't need to raise the pinna and then raise the 15k you know to get over the pinna if you just lower the pinna you could hear the 15k so again another track dot of life born to rage Another one from your Party Anthems playlist, you know, just a fast, hard-hitting song 
that you don't need to lower the volume because of the 5K is actually at a pretty great level. But yeah, just another another track to get a really feel for what speed this driver uh, tends, where I like this driver and how hard it hits. I think that's another great song for it. Stage and imaging um, are definitely the polish on this one. You know, it's that last bit when it's tuned by Hawaii Bad Boy, you sort of, what did he do to really finish off the set? And I think the stage and the imaging are, are, are that little bit. I think he, if you go back and listen to what Melee sounded like, that was a hard-hitting bass set, but didn't didn't necessarily have the polish that this one does at, at this little bit. So that's why I kind of said it's the polish on this one. I, I do think that, you know, a couple of years later, he did a great job on on that part of it. Definitely could use more depth, like I said. It comes a little bit forward, it's a little bit close to you, but it really does have that wall of sound feeling that some people like, and it's more important that it has nice imaging and separation from the bass, making it sound more open than most sets with this much bass, right? Again, it's, it's kind of a unique one because it hits so hard, it has such a big bass shelf, yet you still have the separation, you don't have a super slow driver, Everything kind of came together. And like I said, it's kind of as if he listened to lots of these recent sets, found a driver that hits really hard, tuned it in a way that was cleaner than people are going to expect, and then kind of got the rest of this bit, stage and imaging and separation, all that stuff, you know, as good or better than every other $30 set. So yeah, I think he figured out some flaws in some other sets and what he wanted to do with a sound that may have come from Melee or back in that time and really delivered a complete package with, you know, the accessories and nice shells at a price that's a little bit hard to beat. So that's what I got on Z300. So thank you guys again for tuning in and I'll see you next time.